it is our pleasure to be able to be part of the CCA conference and among such outstanding professionals. Uh, we really are fortunate at TD to have you all as partners, um, especially in a year that was so challenging. Um, we really don't take for granted how collaborative, professional and welcoming you all are, and we truly enjoy working with you. Um, each year I have the privilege of saying a few words and introducing the past fellows that have completed the TD Malosh Monix Fellowship Program. Whew, that's a mouthful. Uh, and I think the reason that we're so thrilled to support this program is because it develops talent uh, for the advancement profession. And Maruna and Zachary are definitely talent. Maruna Timotin completed her fellowship at the New Brunswick Community College, and Zachary Robertson was at SAIT. And when they entered the program, it was during a pandemic. And when they share with you what they've been able to accomplish over the last year, despite the pandemic, you'll see just how resilient these individuals are. They adapted to their environment, quickly shifting gears. And that's a critical capability for leaders because as we all know, change is the one constant. I wanna congratulate Dr. Rod Morrison from Acadia for his Lifetime Achievement Award. And he remarked in his, he said in his remarks that leaders have to be able to adapt. And I think what Maruna and Zachary have demonstrated is that they have these skills. Despite a changed environment, both Maruna and Zachary stayed focused on their objective of alumni engagement. They built their networks, they learned how to develop relationships, manage stakeholders, but they also learned strategic thinking and execution. And they must have done really well because both have secured positions in the advancement profession. And we just could not be more thrilled because that's what this program is all about. So Maruna has started as an administrative coordinator, strategy and operations in the development and donor relations at University, sorry, University of New Brunswick. And Zachary is the donor relations officer at SAIT. So congratulations to you both. And now I invite you to share your learnings with your advancement peers. Thank you for that very, very nice introduction. Anna. Okay, so hi everyone. It's a pleasure to be here today, uh, wherever here is for you, and share a bit about my incredible experience as a TD Insurance Malosh Monarchs Fellow in Advancement. It is not so I'm tired of reading and guilty of writing the phrase an unprecedented year, time, or difficulty too often in this past year. But to say things have changed drastically since my fellowship began in 2020 is an understatement. Since putting together my initial fellowship plan in 2019, there has been a great deal of change at state in the province of Alberta and of course in the world in general. Due to budget issues, in September 2020, I was transitioned from my original team on alumni communications to donor relations for the remainder of my fellowship. Over the course of my fellowship, I've signed three different temporary contracts with SAFE. I've seen half of my team let go permanently and temporarily due to budget cuts. I'm very happy to say that many have returned to work. And I've also had three different managers. So as my experience demonstrates, the best laid plans can very often go sideways. But at the end of the day, all you can do is embrace change, make the most of every opportunity, and move forward. As I prepared for this report, I looked back at the fellowship page on CCA's website, and a few lines describing the goals of the fellowship really jumped out to me. Include strong professional development. As this year proved to me, there's no better professional development plan than having to respond to sudden changes and learn by doing things. Don't underestimate the amount and quality of work and enthused, well-prepared fellows can accomplish. By really embracing and welcoming all of the changes of experiences here, I feel like I've been able to be a part of a lot more projects, assignments, and conversations with different colleagues than had the year gone for in plan. Provide exceptional opportunities each year for emerging professionals to gain practical experience. The opportunity provided to me by this fellowship literally has ensured that I still have a job here at SAFE. And through all of the disruptions and change, I've gained immense experience doing work that I love and will not have the chance to do otherwise. A 
Although it has been a difficult period due to these disruptions and change, I believe I've gained invaluable experience and in adaptability. Through all the changes, the main objective of my fellowship remains the same to create positive, long lasting, and supportive relationships between SAFE and our alumni and donor community. And now I'd like to share some of the awesome work we've been doing at SAFE in that regard. I transitioned to the donor relations team at an exciting time. They're in the process of building out a digitally focused engagement strategy for our donor family. Joining at this time gave me the opportunity to have a seat at the table and contribute to the brainstorming and planning section. The emphasis on digital also came to serendipitous time, as many of our donors and people across the world in general have made the move to working remotely due to COVID 19. So, here are just three of our digitally focused objectives set out for the team last summer integrate digital tools into our program to deliver best in class donor relations and stewardship, and to lead the way in digital donor recognition. So based on those objectives, the team came up with a number of engagement opportunities to explore the following thing. With the emphasis on digital, we look to change and leverage platforms we were already using, such as our safe alumni social media channel, the news and events section on safe.ca, a monthly donor e newsletter. We also look to heavily integrate and incorporate thank you into our approach. Inspirational story time. This involved interviewing and speaking with students, donors, faculty, and staff, and exploring the many ways donors have an impact on the success of our students at SAFE. From interviewing students who had lost their job and savings due to COVID and could not have continued their education, could not have been receiving donor supported emergency funding, to speaking with an automotive maintenance instructor on how a new donation of cars gives students the best opportunity to learn the skills they need to succeed. Every story was really an inspiration for me. A number of these donor impact stories appeared in the top 10 list with most new communication pieces on safe.ca. An opportunity we identified to demonstrate genuine and consistent gratitude towards a particular segment of donors was in how we welcome first time donors to our community. First time donors are difficult audience to engage as historically they have a low rate of continuing to give and engage with the institution. Since March of this year, we implemented a new engagement initiative for these donors where we send them a thank you video featuring a student testimonial specifically thanking these donors for making their first gift to safe. This email goes out on the first Tuesday of each month and is then followed by a custom edition of our donor newsletter and welcomes them to the community. Um, I'm very happy to say that since we have implemented uh, these engagement pieces, we've seen a very high open, click through, and view impression. When we thought about demonstrating donor impact, we thought, what better way to do this than to have our students themselves share how donor support has changed their lives? So when it came to creating a stewardship report for one of state's major donors, we knew we wanted to deliver something special. In previous years, we have sent this donor our usual stewardship report as a PDF document with photos and testimonials from students impacted by their support, along with the usual breakdown of funds and activities. This year, we decided to really leverage thank yous to deliver that unique and customized report. My colleague created an incredible compilation video featuring about a dozen students thanking this donor and sharing how it had impacted them. We sent this out via thank you email, which included a customized landing page and the link to the actual report. With all the positive feedback we received from our colleagues, we're aiming to make this kind of customized reporting the benchmark for future reports at SAFE. And last but not least, we wanted to connect philanthropy to student success by having our donors share in their own words why they value their support of state and how they see the connection between philanthropy and student success. To do this, I sent out a solicitation email for donors to record their testimonial videos via thank you for us to share, share on social media, our donor webpage, and their own Donors have been more than happy to participate and have provided us with some really inspirational and amazing content. To demonstrate this, I'd like to share a video submission from one of our donors. Good morning. My name is Marvin Miranda, and I'm proud to say that I'm a member of the SAIT family. 
I graduated from Journalism Administration 50 years ago this fall. And since then, when I've had the opportunity to give back, I've been pleased to do so by attending fundraising functions, by making donations, and most recently, by offering scholarships to students who can make good use of them. SAIT gave me a great education at a very reasonable price. I got my first job because of that education and SAIT opened doors for me and provided a stepping stone later in life. I give to SAIT because it's the right thing to do and because SAIT is family. Thank you, and if anyone was paying close attention, you might have noticed that he had a Saint brand tattoo on his forehead. I'd like to end by saying a tremendous thank you to TD Insurance, Melange Monitors, as well as CCA. As I said before, I would not have the career I am on track to enjoy now had it not been for this incredible fellowship here. The opportunity to grow both personally and professionally over the past year has been nothing short of life changing. I'm beyond honored to receive this fellowship, and I'm so excited to see where my journey and advancement takes me from here. I'd also like to give a personal shout out to Mark Hatzlet, who's been a fantastic guide and support throughout this process. Congratulations to the two new fellows. Thank you all again, and I will hand it over to my fellow outgoing fellow, Bruno. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Let's uh, hear a round of applause for Zach. <laughs> Woo! Well done. It's uh, very impressive what you've uh, managed to accomplish during this uh, non-traditional year. Um, so uh, thank you everyone for attending today's uh, uh, presentation. So it's an honor for me um, as um, a newly introduced uh, um, uh, worker to uh, to the field of advancement i uh, i am i'm extremely nervous and at the same time excited that uh, i i feel like i finally found um a career that uh, uh, will uh, will take me on um, a, a path of success and that i uh, enjoy enormously um as a fellow uh, i uh, with nbcc I, uh, I started out uh, this, ap uh, this application in uh, pre-COVID uh, uh, times, and uh, my projects uh, were, um, were supposed to be based on uh, a lot of interaction, a live interaction with, uh, with uh, um, students, with alumni, with uh, uh, stakeholders in general. Um, but uh, as we all know, and as Zach has mentioned, that this uh, situation has turned out to be a little different for, for all of us. Uh, personally, it still seems, uh, this seems a, a little bit surreal because I feel like, why are we not all in Newfoundland right now? <laughs> and uh, how, uh, how, how are my projects going to turn out? Uh, you know, not being possible to uh, um, creates uh, the relationships that I mostly enjoy doing in person. So um, it has been confusing and to say the least, but uh, looks like we've all found very creative ways uh, and the resilience to make things work and uh, improve our, our, um, our re resiliency. Um, I should not be defeated was my, uh, my motto and will continue to be for, the, for probably some time from now on. And uh, I am very, very glad that uh, I was able to uh, participate in this amazing project. Talking about the impact on my career of uh, this um, uh, important uh, fellowship, um, it was uh, it was after my education when I finished and I decided that uh, my goals are going to be very simple. I wanted to uh, work with the organizations that would serve communities and contribute to their growth and development. Uh, working in the higher education realm has proven to be a great fit for my aptitudes and skills uh, because I've learned through this opportunity and a, a tremendous amount of, um, of information and um, and strategies and that I highly value and they will be on my resume and will continue to help me throughout my career. Um, the first, uh, my first uh, term as a, as a fellow in advancement, uh, I explored and I discovered all the new strategies for engagement. 
Um, I, I worked on relationship building projects and stewardship and so much more. At the same time, uh, I was able to um, uh, collaborate with um, many professionals uh, in the department. Um, I collaborated with a college-wide college team and I networked with professionals in the field and participated in uh, many development, uh, many personal development sessions. Um, simultaneously, and to 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 my to my uh, towards my luck, the college had been uh, engaged in a major fundraising campaign, and this had allowed me to learn uh, a significantly um, amount of, um, of things that uh, would con directly contribute to to my learning experience. Um, my projects with NBCC um, were, um, uh, they, um, they branched out towards a, a couple of uh, different directions. Uh, so I was able to uh, work with uh, the development team uh, through uh, for fundraising campaigns. And I was also um, able to collaborate with the alumni department for their alumni and uh, student engagement strategies. Uh, one of my uh, one of my projects uh, and uh, one of the it was actually the third one that uh, we uh, we attacked because it was supposed to be uh, a student philanthropy initiative which um, was uh, mostly based on interacting and um, and building relationships with our students but because of COVID that obviously went a little sideways and uh, we decided that we were going to uh, to leave that for the end. Um, and it was a good decision we did so. I had uh, plenty of time to, uh, to do much research and um, understand the, the initiative and, um, and complete uh, the task uh, to uh, hopefully what it is now uh, a good project that will uh, contribute to uh, NBCC's uh, development and philanthropic um, initiatives with the students. Um, if through this project, I, uh, we explored, like I said, fundraising methods and tactics that resonate with the current and potential future generation of students, and we uh, identified key motivators to drive interest and success in student philanthropy. It, was an, it is NBCC's first attempt at developing a strategy for, for fundraising uh, that targets the student body. Uh, in most cases, those that, those that feel the need to give are those that directly experience the impact of their investment, which mostly would be alumni. With uh, students, things are different. Um, coming up with a strategy that speaks to and motivates a student to participate in philanthropic programs was the center of our discussions. Why is it important? What motivates them to give? How should they give? Were all important questions that the college needed to answer before launching an official proposal. So we took this to, act, to action and my contribution to this project consistent in researching best practices for giving uh, at other institutions and other research to gain knowledge in how to create and develop a philanthropic mindset. We have successfully created a plan and a presentation that was presented to the NBCC student council members. Their feedback and approval would consist, would, uh, would consist in the first step towards the implementation of this uh, program. We hope that through this first ever student engagement and philanthropy program, NBCC will have had the opportunity to enhance awareness and importance of the value of uh, future alumni giving. My next project was um, uh, a very dear one to me. <laughs> I was uh, lucky to be appointed to uh, um, to construct the uh, NBCC's first ever donor reporting, donor report uh, that was going to be affixed to um, to their um, community, uh, uh, to their already existing uh, community publication. Uh, for this, I researched and gathered information on specific practices for reporting from other local and Canadian organizations. Our goal is was to show the impact and celebrate the support we receive from our partners during the year. I selected data, created visuals and statistics to enhance the, me the messaging that joined along with stories of real people and projects impacted by our donor support. My team and I are very proud of this immediate achievement and, we, and they will continue to use this first occurrence as a template for the future. The reports are scheduled to be mailed to the, to the majority of the donors and we, we hope that they will have a great impact 
uh, that will be shown that uh, through the showcase of, of this report and will show proof of their support and encourage them to give further. My third project, which is the first I had started with, um, is a project that was based on the backbone of um, a, a an already existing program that uh, NBCC had, um, and it has to do with alumni segmentation and engagement. Uh, for this uh, project, um, I was assigned with uh, researching uh, and uh, for the, seg the kind of segmentations of uh, alumni data and identify cohorts and segments. Uh, I, I got to work with uh, advancement teams who identified best practices. I collaborated with alumni to gather feedback through direct engagements and surveys. I developed unique, a unique engagement strategy for each segment. And we, uh, we ended up with investigating current practices to measure the impact. In this project, my activities included reviewing the plans premises, the ones that NBC had already worked on previously, and learning about the industry standards in alumni engagement and compiling the information I used to produce the implementation and tracking plan. I used the strategic engagement document to construct the implementation steps. I re-identified the data that needed to be collected, followed by a, a how-to segment process, and defined each segment's values. Further, I customized a new engagement activity for each segment and added them to a tactics table that included goals, benchmarks, budget, communications, and scheduling. I included in my schedule weekly team meetings with the alumni coordinator. We discussed that based on our current programs and data available, the segmentation process, relationship building steps and tracking would be best streamlined through a CRM. During this process, I, had, I identified the need for a new CRM software that would integrate well with both departments of development and alumni relationships. This program was going to improve the efficiency of the team by streaming the information we work with and collaborating seamlessly. The initiative met with a positive attitude from the team and I set out in the research for a new product. I, which I negotiated and eventually procured for NBCC. I do hope that this system will serve NBCC for years to come and that their engagement programs become more fruitful. This is my team of experts. When I first uh, got at, uh, to NBCC, I, uh, yeah, from, from the, when literally the first moment when I stepped into the office at NBCC, I hurt my foot and I had to complete an injury assessment form. So that is when I understood that these people have my back and they are experts. They knew immediately what I had to do. Um, I want to thank the whole advancement team at NBCC. They have been a great, uh, great team and great uh, mentors for me. Um, I, they are very knowledgeable and uh, they are definitely a team that know how to build success. In the end, I would like to thank CCAE, TD Insurance, Malash Monix, and NBCC for this outstanding opportunity. Once again, congratulations to you, Zach, and congratulations to the 2021 fellows. Mm -hmm. uh, special thanks to, to my team at NBCC, Tom Midas, Sean Amos, and Christina Nicole, and uh, Carrie Jane Rose. <laughs> And, uh, and uh, oh my goodness, there's someone else and I, sorry, <laughs> I'm too nervous for this right now. <laughs> Ara Lee McKinley, sorry about that. Um, and last but not least, I would like to thank UNB's Angelique Simpson and uh, Scott DeYoung for giving me a chance to continue my work in advancement uh, as their newest employee in the advancement department. Thank you everyone so much. <laughs>